Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're hitting the solar system shift. We've got events and updates on what's happening in our local galactic neighborhood with an eye towards the solar watch factors for the next couple of days as well. We are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. We find there have not been significant flares or CME eruptions in Earth's direction. Far side eruptive activity continues moderately, and we've got a dwindling sunspot scenario and rising filament watch. Let's check those out, both a bit more, starting with the sunspots. Incoming areas are underdeveloped over on the left, while significant complexity is gaining ground in the northern departing group on the right. But it's about to leave the Earth-facing half of the sun. The two largest filaments are incoming on the south. Those are big boys. If their northern reach releases, they will snap off southward if it's anywhere else. These pose Earth-directed eruption watches. You see their mid-coronal altitude plasma dancing around in the ropes there. Folks, we have a tropical alert north of Australia. They're already taking a major amount of rain there, so we're going to be closely monitoring the development of that system. It is expected to get a bit stronger over the next 24 hours. We're going to start the Articles of Jupiter, where the Juno Orbiter is back online after a week in safe mode. Not only is Jupiter's magnetic field changing, like Earth's is, altering its local powerful magnetic and radiation fields, but the Sun whacked Jupiter with the CME at the same time as the satellite went out. Some combination of those things is almost certainly the cause. Uranus is up next, where auroral observations are allowing them to track its changing magnetic pole positions, which they are not even hiding anymore, but they also revealed that the rotation rate is now 28 seconds longer than they expected. Still not even 18 hours for a full rotation, so that makes Venus, Earth, Saturn, and now Uranus with definitive changing or updated rotation rates in the last eight years. Lastly, folks, get a lot of crap for the solar helium increase. When I discuss it, they always say, nah, that was just sunspot minimum and the weak fields make more helium. Well, that wasn't what the papers said, and now we have a measurement during sunspot maximum. And observers, you're here every morning repeatedly because you already know who's right and who's wrong. Powerful helium detections off the charts from a weak field spot on the sun during sunspot maximum. This not only proves that the coronal chemistry is changing, but that it's tied to the changing magnetic scenario of our star. Solar system shift marches on, and if you need to catch up, learn more, or review, link to the full explanation of what's happening is found right below the video in the homework section. Folks, be sure to plan your trip to come out to Observer Ranch this year. Lots of major events, lots of smaller ones too. I'll be out there this afternoon, Sunday afternoon as well. Next weekend is the conference and chicken class and after that grand opening weekend with Dr. Robitaille. Go to ObserverRanch.com, see the event list, pick your lodging option and book your stay. I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to pray with you. Could use the good vibes to be honest. Come see us and it starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.